Today we're going to be installing a new access point on my Unify system from Ubiquiti. This is the U6 Lite Wi-Fi 6 access point. Welcome back to GeekSmart, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to do another install. This is going to be fairly straightforward, fairly simple. Um, this is the new Wi-Fi 6 Lite or U6 Lite access point from, from uh, Ubiquiti's Unify system. Pretty straightforward. It's a power over Ethernet device. It does not come with any power injector, so if you do not have a switch that has uh, power over Ethernet capability, you will have to also purchase a power injector for it. Um, this is basically just the, the access point itself and the mounting mechanism. So, let's bring it in. Let's pop open the box. Let's get everything out. Okay, so this is the simple little box that it comes with. It does show back here that it comes with the access point, the actual mount. It does come with a ceiling tile, uh, I guess a, a adapter or a support block as well, and then of course the mounting hardware itself, the actual screws. This one does have a little paper guy back here that we can just rip open to get into the box. Oh, there is even information underneath the, the flap here. Slide it out. So we can see all the actual hardware here, whether it's going to be uh, drywall anchors. There are a couple drywall anchors in here. Well, let's, let's just rip this out and pull it, get everything out. So it does have some hardware if you're going to mount it into a ceiling tile with the uh, nuts and stuff to go with that. It actually has, if you're mounting into something more solid, it has some screws for that. Uh, and then, of course, those screws can also be used with the anchors here. So if you're going to go into drywall, there are the drywall anchors that it comes with as well. Um, I believe this little tool is here to release it from the mount. Let's go ahead and pop this guy out. It does come with a, uh, a plastic cover to keep uh, dirt debris out of it while you're getting it mounted. So you can leave that on until you actually have it mounted and then pop it off at the last second. Keeps it clean too so you don't get fingerprints on it. That's awesome because when you're working around you never know what kind of fingerprints you're going to get, right? Now, we, underneath here, we actually have this actually is your, uh, your ceiling tile um, support essentially. So you put your screws through and then you put your nuts on and this is always hidden so you'll never actually see this, right? So that's how it is. It comes uh, actually sealed in plastic. But yeah, pull that open and you're gonna go. In my case, I'm going to drywall or plaster technically. But this is the plate. Now, if you watched my other uh, video, this is going to be very similar to the Nano, um, the uh, Unified Nano uh, access point. Now, this is just a clip. So you, you, this actually mounts, this actually faces out. They actually, you logo, you can see this faces against the wall. So if this box was the ceiling. This mounts like that, you know, with your four screws. And then this little clip is actually the designated that actually locks it to the access point. So if this is mounted to the ceiling, my hands the ceiling, it goes, oh, geez, in there like so. And so you can see this little clip here. If I actually turn it, it clicks and then locks it wherever it's going to go. Now, if you needed to unlock this, you'd actually have to get in here to lift that clip off of that little ridge there. Well, that's what that little tool does. Um, you actually, because obviously we're going to be against a ceiling like this, uh, you actually get this in here and you lift it like so, and then you'll be able to twist and release. So that's, you're going to want to keep this just to, in a handy location in case you ever have to pull this back off to, to work on it. So essentially we're lot, we're, uh, mounting this to the, the ceiling. Now also something to notice if we're linked, um, and so we actually have it locked into place. If you, I like to make sure that my logos look good as well. So this U, the, let me take that plastic lid off. You can see the Ubiquiti logo, the U logo is actually perfectly in line with the clip. So if I put the clip perfect and I lift it up, that's where the U is going to be. So if you wanted to make it look professionally installed, you don't want this at a, like a 45 degree angle. You want this in line with the room. That's what I would personally do. And so that's what you're going to want this to do. You're going to want to be this to be in line with the room. Uh, at, at, at any 90 degree angle, obviously, this, this, you're just going to want to have this, the, the cross axis in line with the room. 
that's just getting picky on things. It's not a requirement, but it just makes it look better. So what we're going to do is we're going to head upstairs. We're going to mount this bad boy where we're going to put it. Once we figure out where we're going to put it, then I'm going to drill a hole where I'm going to want my cable coming through, feeding through. And I'm going to stick my wire up into the ceiling, up into the attic to find out where my wire is coming down. Because it's going to be a lot easier to do it from below, get it all ready, and then just feed the, ca the cable down, terminate it, and be done. So let's head upstairs to get ready to, to mount. Mount first. So I found the center of my room. Basically just took half the dimensions each direction and centered it. So that's my X cut in the center is. And then what I did is place that basically as centered as I can get it. And just made some light marks uh, on two of them. Then I took distances off the wall for both of those to make sure it's perfectly uh, parallel with that wall. And then after I did that, um, placed it back up here and took my pencil and marked all four holes so I knew exactly where to drill. Now I could also just take a drill bit, just like a small like uh, eighth or smaller, and just make a couple of four marks. That way I know for sure that I'm getting a good start. That's where the, the anchors are gonna go and I might do that. And then I'll drill the other the rest of them out here with the full size bit for the anchors. So I'm my dr drill and bill, uh, everything set up and then we'll, we'll go. Okay, so I got my drill and everything. I'm just gonna make some quick marks with the with a small bit, and then I'm gonna come back with my quarter inch bit to do the rest. Get back in line where I had it. I like to get all four screws started at least, that way you know it's going to line up. And there we go. Now I just got to figure out where we're going to pull the cable through. Okay, so if we're looking at this, how it's going to actually sit up here in the end. Uh, so the you can see where the hole was, is where the lock's going to go. So I'm not going to actually twist it into place, but that's how it's going to sit, just like that. The cable actually comes in from the back side, right back here. You can see right there. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to come down and then in to, well, into right about, here's where the actual cable is going to plug in, right about here. So I think I'm going to come in, I'm going to drill a hole right about here, right in this uh, secondary latch probably, but not in the latch because I learned my lesson on that one before. Um, you want to be away from where it actually hooks in. So in this case, doo -doo -doo, it's gonna go that way, which means I wanna be right about there with it. That's the hole that I wanna drill. And I'm gonna have a decent amount of play to actually, that it covers. Let's see, that's gonna cover all the way to there. So I don't wanna go too big of a hole, but I wanna go big enough where the cable obviously is easily gonna fit through. So I grab my drill. Start smaller, work bigger. So I'm gonna start with a quarter inch. And I know, like I said, it's gonna come in over here. I wanna go kind of at an angle, personally. I'm gonna go a little bigger. That's a little small for a cable, especially if I'm gonna fish it through. Okay, that should be plenty big for the, to get the cable through. Now I'm doing this by myself. It's gonna make it easier if I have something where I'm, I can easily find it. So I have an old, it's actually an old coat hanger, I think that was straightened, but it's firm, it's nice and hard, so I can actually poke it through the insulation. So, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And there we are. So I'll get it to hopefully stay a little bit. I'm gonna work my way up to the attic, and I'm gonna pop it through. I'm not gonna video part this, I'm gonna, you'll see the video as the cable just is sticking out. Let's go get ready to go in the attic. So up here in the attic, this is what it looks like. You can see the my probe sticking out. And at first when I was jamming it through, I hit it with kind of a board. See, I actually have a cross board here. And then I have my cable. So I'm gonna go ahead and get positioned and just basically follow that down and stick the end of the cable through the hole. So that was actually really, that was really close to a joist there, but I'll let that pop through. I'm gonna stick my cable, pull it through, and I have plenty of spare. 
put my insulation back and there we are good to go eventually i'll do something with the access i kind of want to actually put some hooks up but that'll do for now okay so we have the cable that obviously can be pulled in and out now i gotta terminate it with an rj45 so give me a moment So obviously if you have your materials for testing purposes, you're going to want to test this now before we get this in place because it's, you're going to have to remove this to do that otherwise. Um, I'm going to go ahead and plug it in to the access point, which just plugs in like that. Now, should be about like that. Do, do, do. And she should go into place. Uh, a little off. There it goes. So you just gotta get it right and then turn it clockwise to lock it. And you'll hear it lock. Now we're fully hidden, you can't see the wire, you can't see any hole. I can take the plastic cover off now. We're done here. Now I'm gonna go downstairs, plug it in. That thing should light up. Sorry about the water noise, but we have our access point. This is gonna be access point three. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and plug this into the switch into a PoE port. Now, if you didn't have a PoE port, you'd have to do an injector of some kind. Click that in. Should start getting lights. Ah, lights. And there goes the gig. So we are getting gig, fantastic. We'll let her boot up and get her connected. And uh, hopefully it should be lighting up top. Okay, so here we are um, in the App Store. The Unified Network app is the app we're going to be doing our setup on that you could also do through the computer technically as well. I already have all my controllers. Everything's all set up, so I'm just adding an access point at this point. So I'm going to get it open, and it's going to open up my... Uh, there we go. Hit connected, and there we go. So right away, it even logged in, and it found a new access point. So I don't really have to do a whole lot other than hit the setup button down here. So it's pretty awesome. We'll hit setup. It'll connect to it. Now we can actually name it. I'm going to call this one Living Room. I'm just going to call it Living Room for now. I can always change this later. I'll hit Finish. It's going to add and adopt the access point automatically into my Dream Machine Pro. And it'll be connected to the SSID and everything that I already have set up through my controller. Now if you have multiple SSIDs or if you're setting this up by itself, obviously your setup might vary a little bit. but it says setting up about one minute, 20 seconds left. We're going to give it, let it do its thing. So setup is now complete. Access point has been added. And now if I go to my controller and I hit the devices, we can actually see the various access points that I already have. Um, now, this is the one we set up, living room. Family room AP is one that I actually set up just prior to this. Um, about a week little about a week and a half ago right when i first got these because i actually bought two of these devices um, but so these two are the same device if i go to living room there's uh no clients yet but we just got it connected that's eventually going to fill out with more clients obviously as it evens out my network um, but i'll give it time before that goes this is more of the setup than the review I should go into this as well, so we're still in the access point, the living room access point. If we hit configure, we can actually go through here, we can change the LED settings. So I'm, rather than using site settings, I'm going to turn my LEDs off. It's in, a, in my living room where my home theater is, I don't want a glow of a device. So I'm just going to turn the LED off, and you can choose that as you see fit. Now if you want to change the, the name, that's the alias, that's right there. Radio, services, network, you can change all these items here. Um, you can obviously even copy configuration from a different AP. Um, move to a site. You can do everything force provisions, which it, we're all connected. It's good. We're set to go. Oh, band steering as well. I didn't even see that. Balanced or prefer 5G. You can change these things. These things that I'm going to play with myself. So, I now have two of the exact same uh, Wi-Fi 6 Lite. Uh, the U6 Lite. Now, they also have a long range or LR version of the Wi-Fi 6 uh, unit as well. 
That one still hasn't been fully released. It's still on pre-order until later this month in January. So this is a 2x2 two two Mimo. If you wanted something that has a better range, more capacity, uh, faster throughput, 4x4 four four Mimo, then you want to go the big dog, the 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 long range unit. Now, this is 100 bucks each. So I bought two of them. These were not given to me. I actually bought these myself. These are a brand new item through Unify, and I definitely wanted to get them in my hands. So now I actually have four access points going in my house, uh, and we're going to see how good the coverage is. Now, the two access, access points I had before, the Nano and the Flex, I thought they were really, really good. I have one of them outside. That one doesn't have as good of a connection inside the house because it's going through brick and everything, uh, but it gives my backyard fantastic coverage. In this case, I wanted to get at least one, if not two more inside, and I decided to go with the, the light, mainly because I wanted a Wi-Fi 6 router, and I wanted to try out the new one, and the big one isn't available yet. So um, I thought, well, I'll do two of these rather than one of the bigger ones. Uh, the the long-range unit is 179 These are 99 I'm going to put links to all this stuff. If you have any questions at all, let me know. Comment below. Like, comment, subscribe. I will have more videos on my TechCoots channel, which... When I get all my reviews ready to go, I have a lot to do specifically with the Unify system. So, thanks for watching to the end. Um, hopefully you learned and saw how everything went. I do love how the app now just, it just brings up that access point right away. Real easy, hit setup, name your access point, and you're done. Right, you can go to the setup and, and do more things in the background and through the app as well and go the, through the configuration port. But setting it up, if you already had your controller set up, is ridiculously easy. That's fantastic. Specifically in the small business scape that these are designed to go into, it makes it really easy for small businesses to do this without hiring out in an outside IT crew. So, pretty awesome. Yeah. Unify or Ubiquity, you make some great stuff. I can't wait to see what else comes out of this, but... Yeah. Thanks again for watching. We'll catch you on another future setup video right here on GeekSmart.